It's a show about football or soccer, a dismantling of toxic masculinity, and a classic sports story, a laugh out loud comedy, and a therapy. Dupe. Ted Lasso is all these things and more, and today we're giving you eight behind the scenes facts that every true fan should know. But before we get into that, make sure to like this video and smash that subscribe button the way Ted smashed his head on that doorframe. By the way, we have a secret about that moment later in the video, so stay tuned. Also beware, there's spoilers, stories about the most difficult member of the cast, and a compelling argument for karaoke as a networking event ahead. Season 2's most epic stunt was completely real. The actors who auditioned to play members of the fictional Richmond team had to submit a tape of them demonstrating real soccer skills to be considered for the roles. Most of the actors you see on the show have played football before. Cristo Fernandez, who plays Danny Rojas, was even a professional player before a knee injury forced him to retire. Apparently, he's not kidding when he says, but Phil Dunster had no such background. In fact, he failed a rugby tryout at the age of 15 for being too short. Ouch. Maybe this is why he initially auditioned for the role of Higgins, Rebecca's assistant. Knowing that, it's surprising that Dunster ended up winning the role of Jamie Tart, the team's star player. And it's even more surprising that he ended up scoring a winning goal. That's right, in season 2, episode 6, that's actually Phil Dunster free kicking a 45 yard goal, a fact corroborated by behind the scenes footage from writer actor Brendan Hunt. The show's picture editor, AJ Catiline, also tweeted that Dunster got this shot on his second take, no CGI needed. By the way, the plot point is based on a real goal that Cristiano Ronaldo scored against Arsenal. The show Ted Lasso wouldn't be here without two five minute commercials. In 2013, NBC Sports released a sketch promoting a new season of football on their network. Hey, how you doing? This is Ted Lasso. I'm the new head coach of the Tottenham Hotspurs, and uh, I'd like to talk to the Queen, please. Jason Sudeikis starred as an American football coach hired to lead a British team. The sketch was so well received that Sudeikis ended up filming a follow up sketch in 2014. Well, today should be an absolute cracker of a game, Ted. Absolutely. We've got two teams here who are desperate for three points to avoid relegation. What are you looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward to the definition of relegation. Sudeikis' real-life friend and fellow improviser Brendan Hunt was also in both sketches and would later write for Ted Lasso and co-star as Coach Beard. Manchester United. Super rich. Everybody either loves him or hates him. Dallas Cowboys. Liverpool. Used to be great. Haven't won a title in a really long time. Also Dallas Cowboys. Speaking of sketches, if you looked at Ted's locker room dance in the show and thought, what up with that? You'd actually be onto something. Sudeikis cribbed those moves from a character he played on SNL. Eventually, Sudeikis fleshed out the character to be more nuanced. Apple TV bought the show, and the rest is history. Karaoke plays a huge role in several aspects of the show. Season 1, Episode 7 features an iconic scene of the entire team, and most importantly, Rebecca celebrating a win by singing karaoke at a local pub. But did you know the scene is actually inspired by real events? In an interview with Sports Illustrated, Jason Sudeikis says the character of Ted is partially modeled after Liverpool coach Jurgen Klopp. In 2018, Klopp famously took his team out for a night of karaoke, a bonding event that may have been indirectly responsible for their stellar performance on the field. In the Ted Lasso verse, Rebecca ends up turning out a stellar performance of her own, and that's no accident. Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca, spent many years starring in musical theater productions on the West End. When she sent in a tape of her singing Let It Go from Frozen, the famous litigious execs at Disney were so impressed, they allowed her to use the song in the show. Singing karaoke also helped Juno Temple land the role of Keeley. Prior to Ted Lasso, Temple starred in mostly dramatic projects, including the time she played a lesbian werewolf in a film with Elvis's granddaughter. The point is, she was at a stage in her career where she never had taken on a major comedic role. And when your career hits that stage, it's your cue to hit a different stage. At least, that's what happened to Temple, who was singing with friends at the same bar where Jason Sudeikis and his then partner Olivia Wilde were enjoying their night. Sudeikis said he was so struck by her performance, he immediately considered her for the role of Keeley. He went on to tell Variety, you can learn a lot about someone by the way they do karaoke. Remember this anecdote next time you consider ignoring your friend's invite to belt you ought to know on a Friday night. It could just make your career. Marcus Mumford scored the show. You probably know Marcus Mumford as the lead singer of Mumford & Sons, but did you know he and Jason Sudeikis have a history? They met each other on the set of SNL in 2012. They hit it off so much that 
that Sudeikis later starred in a Mumford & Sons music video. Because of that connection, Sudeikis asked Mumford to compose Ted Lasso's theme song and the music for the rest of the show. Mumford let his actual passion for AMC Wimbledon inform his work and used the BBC soccer highlights show, Match of the Day, as inspiration for the theme. Brett Goldstein wasn't supposed to be on the show. Comedian Brett Goldstein plays Roy Kent, a character with a hard outer shell and a warm gooey center that many thirsty fans consider to be a total snack. But Goldstein wasn't originally considered for the role. He wasn't supposed to be on screen, period. Instead, Goldstein started out on the show's writing staff, but along the way, he fell in love with the role of Roy. At the end of the writing process, he sent a sheepish audition taped to the producer with a very important caveat. I sent a self tape that I'd done and I said, if this is embarrassing, pretend you never got it. If this is embarrassing, pretend you never got it is a phrase you also might bookmark next time you shoot your shot on Hinge. But the risk paid off and Goldstein got the role. By the way, that producer we mentioned earlier is Bill Lawrence, the creator of Scrubs. The Scrubs connection continued when Lawrence convinced Zach Braff to direct an episode in season one. Goldstein's story and the show itself are really testaments to believing in yourself and absolutely going for it, even if it leads to fate literally hitting you on the head which is what happened in Jason Sudeikis injured himself and stayed in character. In episode 10, Ted is so overhyped after a pep talk with Rebecca that he victory skips out of her office. What happens next looks like a pratfall, but was almost a workman's comp claim. Thanks, Paul. That's Sudeikis actually banging his head against the doorframe. And that's also Hannah Waddingham's real reaction. Instead of breaking character, Sudeikis takes the Chumbawamba approach and gets right back up again. The chaos has already begun. <laughs> this choice earned him a few stitches and maybe, tangentially, his Emmy. The cast often stays in character after shooting. It turns out you don't need to sustain a major injury to take your Ted Lasso role home with you. During the 2020 lockdown, Sudeikis, Brendan Hunt, and several other cast members stayed close by, playing the video game FIFA 21 together and trash talking as their characters. Not only did this online banter lead to personal insights that the writers later included in the show, but it also resulted in EA Sports creating official in-game avatars of Ted Lasso characters. And this method acting doesn't stop there. A few members of the team even attended a real FA Cup final together and pranked a newscaster in character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His name is Danny Rojas. We support the Greyhounds His name too. is Danny Rojas. Remember, we he's support a good the Greyhounds. Greyhounds. He's a very good Greyhounds. Greyhounds. By now, you're thinking there's no way this show and its creators are really so sweet all the time. And you'd actually be right. Our final fact involves one cast member that was famously impossible on set. The biscuits are terrible. In season one, Ted proves that the way to his prickly boss's heart is through a daily biscuit delivery. However, according to Hannah Waddingham, they were actually disgusting. In a Vulture interview, she calls choking down the dry prop biscuits while making yummy faces the hardest acting job of my life. Waddingham complained so widely about the biscuits that the props department went out of their way to make ones in season two actually delicious. And if you want to try them for yourself, the Ohio-based ice cream chain Jenny's just rolled out a tie-in flavor called Biscuits with the Boss, a dessert that would be perfect for your Ted Lasso premiere party. So what do you think? Did we leave out your favorite fun fact? Tell us that and what show you'd like us to cover next in the comments below. Great job. Oh. Rock can't just said great job. Oh.